I'm back. Oh my god, what's this? A title page? Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, it's a parcel. It's one of them Warmoth guitar necks, and I just want to show you this neck, uh, run through it, and show you the sort of quality and all the rest of it that you get from uh, Warmoth if you buy a replacement neck. Yeah, so let me get this one out and we can have a bit of a closer look. Now then, before we actually get into looking at this neck, I can tell you that uh, anybody could have bought this neck. I didn't go and get it purposely made, like I have on some of the necks uh, historically that I've bought from Warmoth. I wanted to get a, uh, a neck that was a sort of standard neck, but got a bit of figuring and that sort of thing on it. But I didn't really want to go down the... Uh, the roasted maple root because I've already done that so many times. What I wanted was a, a sort of maple style of neck, you know, that have got this figuring on it for a reasonable price and that's an important thing too. Everybody can't afford the $700 that you could pay for a neck if you went and had one custom made with exotic woods and things like that. So let's just get that out of the way. Anybody could have bought this including you. You could have gone onto the Warmoth site and just thumbed your way around, as I did, and uh, bought it, yeah. Yeah, well, I have to pay the tax and shipping and all the rest to get it to England, but uh, it's just the same neck. <laughs> well, here's the neck, and before we go have a look close up, uh, I'll just confirm what you get with it and what you don't. Uh, on this particular one, because of the specific design, you do get a, an Allen key, a little Warmoth sticker that... I don't think anybody in the right mind would stick on the top of their neck. But some people might. <laughs> Strange taste, some people. But there you go. And uh, it covers a few little different things in there about the neck you've bought. Of course, that might vary depending on what specification you've got. Now, I had a very specific specification for this neck in mind. First of all, one of the very first things that made my decisions about was to buy a neck that had no finish. Now because I'm buying a, a maple neck uh, and it's not roasted, uh, I probably want to put some finish on it. Yeah, I, it's my preference, that's what I'll do. And I, I wanted to make this neck more of a sort of light vintage tint. A light vintage tint, not this heavy dark sort of deep yellow thing you see sometimes. So, I've got a load of stains and things like that, and I'll be talking about those uh, on another video. But they came from Crimson uh, Guitars, or Crimson. You'll know them if you're based in England, and if you're not, well, you might still know them. So if you take a look at the overall quality of this neck, sure you can see it from there. We're going to zoom in anyway. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a really well-made neck. I chose a few things that were out of the ordinary, so I think what we'll do is we'll go in a bit close and uh, I'll cover the specifications and why I chose them. And you'll see for yourself the quality of this neck as it's come literally out of the box all the way from Seattle to sunny old England. Well, it's boring down out there. <laughs> well, here it is, a little bit closer. And you always notice this on the end of a, a Warmoth neck. Uh, it denotes, first of all, that it's uh, licensed by Fender. Which, uh, because it's licensed by Fender and it's got Fender on there, I'll be sticking a logo on at some stage. Not that it'll be a Fender, it won't be, but it'll be a Fender licensed. It says here, warranty void if used without hard finish. Oils are not satisfactory. Well, I know they're not and I don't intend to oil this. I tend to actually hard finish the neck. You can see, first of all, it's made by Warmoth. It's got the little logo on there. And it's got a neck width at the top of uh, 1.758 there. It's got frets that are 6130s. Uh, I don't know what the BC is, but I wouldn't worry about it. We'll, get, we'll find it somewhere. Uh, I think the black dots or something like that, or a, who knows. It's got a, a 10 to 16 compound radius on the neck, which is nice uh, on these sort of necks, and uh, I always try and get that on this type of neck. 
a load of different things we're going to cover anyway and uh, yeah let's get down and move a bit further you can see straight off that it is a uh, bird's eye maple neck you can also see straight off if you turn it you can see that it's a two-part neck there's a piece down here down the edge and there's a back piece and inside of course is the necessary bits and pieces but on this particular neck they're not just any old bits and pieces and they're not just on the bottom end and inside they're actually here as well you can see that well as you can probably see from the image on the screen now uh, that little side adjuster is pretty unique to uh, Walmart from what I see I don't see anybody else fitting one of those although I could be wrong some people say oh yeah Tony everybody fits them <laughs> I don't see them and what that is that's part of a, uh, a special truss rod adjusting mechanism that they fit uh, that allows for uh, really an easy adjustment of the neck especially when you've got down this end the regular fender style adjuster that you'd have to take the neck off to adjust this one on the side here does actually contribute quite a lot and that's one of the reasons why I wanted this modern construction uh, type of neck that's what they call it so if you're going to go and order one and you want this sort of thing on it that's the one to order you'll notice uh, at the other end there is nothing there and because there's nothing on the back it denotes really a two-piece neck well, you've got a number of choices uh, to make when you if you were building the neck from scratch which you can on Warmoth uh, then you can choose the dots the frets the this the that the, the other the woods the, the finish everything really but because I bought this as a sort of off-the-shelf thing I was still able to select a few things but uh, I have to be very careful being in England for example uh, these are black dots here and the black dots on the side and that's a very good reason because had I bought a neck with mother of pearl dots uh, in fact they wouldn't supply me because they're not allowed to by law uh, just bear that in mind for anybody buying from Warmoth internationally unless it's changed but I don't think it has it's uh, all to do with the exportation of shells in any case the two woods are both bird's eye maple it's not that much bird's eye on the top well there's a bit but on the back of course it's all very nice and uh, I like to see that yeah, it makes a change for the product compared to what you might buy from some other companies but then again if you don't have the bird's eye and you used to have a plain old neck the neck would be cheaper and that's also worth bearing in mind if you're going to be buying one well it's a right-handed guitar neck as you can see and uh, this is one and three quarter inches down here she's a little bit fat well but it, it feels good this profile on the back is a warmth what they call standard thin so it sort of fits well it's slightly wide but it doesn't bother me at all not really and by the way the uh, the tuner ream up here is I had it done to 25 64 which is a sort of shallow type of uh, uh, tuner peg uh, which suits me perfectly because I want modern ones on this now taking a look at these frets these frets are what they call 6130 frets which make some sort of not the the sort of tallest thinnest uh, frets that that are made or available there's a whole section of frets that you could well basically go and put on this neck because you still have the choice even if it's a ready-made neck and I like that that's uh, pretty good and I hadn't used 6130s for a very long time so I use your 6150s which are like a jumbo fret but on this one they're a little bit lower and they're a little bit uh, nicer really so it's something different that again I wanted to create on this particular guitar I didn't want it to be the same as all the others even though it, you could argue well it's still a Strat style guitar and all that sort of stuff actually it'll be a very different guitar than all the others I've made 
Okay, I want to talk about the, the nut as well uh, for a, a few seconds. Uh, this is called an Irvana nut. Uh, I have shown these before on my guitars, but uh, what it tends to do is to correct the problems of out of tune guitars when you're playing chords. Well, that's what it claims at least. And uh, it's the second one I've had fitted, and uh, I think they're okay. They don't, they're not detrimental, but certainly uh, to the guitar. Now, listen, these Iovana nuts are not hyper cheap. Uh, you don't get them for like ten dollars or anything. Uh, I forget the exact price of them, but it's on the warmer side. Uh, they're down site more than ten dollars. Let's put it that way. But you can have them fitted. You might as well have it fitted when you buy the neck. You can buy the neck with no nut, I guess. I'm sure they'd do that if you ask them nice. Uh, so I had the black one fitted that matches up very nicely with the with the dots. Yeah, it all makes sense. The frets. Uh, I've talked about the frets a little bit, but you know, a lot of guys will say to you, uh, maybe they'll say to you, and even Warmoth might say it to you. Well, when you get the neck, you're going to have to do some fret work. Now, often you might argue, or some might argue, that the fret work relates to these digging in your hand at the end. Uh, unfortunately, that's not the case any longer. They don't dig in your hand. They used to. They used to be really bad. And uh, you'd have to spend forever sitting there, you know, with a little fret file and all the rest of it. Now you've still got to level it up when you fit the uh, thing on a guitar and you, you've still got to do all that sort of thing, the crown and the crowning and the rest of it. But the fact is that no longer do these stick into you like they used to do on Warmoth, say, eight or nine years ago. Uh, it's a very different situation. So where I used to be very sceptical about Warmoth necks, specifically because of that sort of thing, uh, today uh, less so. And you know I bought uh, Fender necks from uh, Stratosphere Parts and people like that. Uh, Jeff Beck necks for example. But this is not particularly any worse than, than those necks. Uh, it's a bit cheaper and it's more figured so sounded like a plan to me. Oh and by the way the necks are standard uh, 25 and a half inch scale uh, 4 bolt on neck. You know like a Fender. Now the thing is about these headstocks, you can't just take any old headstock and stuff it on any old guitar. If you want to use this specific headstock, which I'm sure a lot of you would, well then you need a licensed neck. Because if you do this and it's not a licensed neck, then it's illegal. <laughs> it's that simple. My view is this will get a logo, it will get uh, all the dies and all the rest done to it and it'll get all the finishing done to it uh, as it needs to to have the Warmoth warranty and uh, always remember that if they say on the back you need to put a hard finish on there not oils then that's what you must do now when you order this thing it's all relative to what you're going to fit through these holes here you might fit the old-fashioned Fender tuners, you might fit the new locking ones or the newer locking ones, uh, or any other tuners. That, that They cover loads of different hole sizes that you can select for the tuners that you're going to fit. Now I always choose these, uh, these shallow ones, simply because uh, the newest Fender tuners fit in this with one exception and the one exception is they have uh, location logs two location logs to those tuners that Warmoth do not drill and to be honest it's a bit frustrating that is you would think as a licensed fender neck that they could drill the two holes for each one of these tuners so they all line up well, I know they can do it. <laughs> they just don't. Why don't they? Who knows? Who cares? If there is a criticism, uh, in my opinion, any criticism at all, that's the criticism right there. They're not 
drilling the two holes if you ask them. There's no option. There's no choice. So they just don't do it. Yeah. Thankfully, I have a, a way of uh, being able to do that and have done for some time. And we'll cover that in another video when we're building the guitar. Yeah, but look at the rest of the back of the neck. I mean, if you look at this, it's all really nicely figured. And that's what I want to see. With these bright lights, it makes it sort of whiter than it really is. It's more a sort of creamy colour, and uh, you can imagine a very light tint on that. The very light tint will bring out all this uh, figuring. And it will also make the, the neck look sort of vintage style, which it will look. But if you want to save some money, you can save some money on buying one of these by not having a finish. Now, it can be a scary thing to some guys that can. Uh, but you don't need to be that scared or that worried about it. You know, you shouldn't be a scaredy cat. <laughs> okay, well, that's the uh, Fender Stratocaster neck. Specifically ordered for a, a new build. And I can talk a little bit about the new build as well, if you want. Just for a few seconds. In particular, the body. Uh, what I ordered was actually maple on maple. And uh, that's a bit of an unusual... Uh, choice really if you think about it but of course like most things I usually have a reason for everything <laughs> I don't just oh that sounds like a good idea no well I ordered the body uh, as maple on maple and it's actually it's a uh, bird's eye maple uh, and it's bird's eye maple on a maple back that's hollow now one of the things you'll know about uh, maple is it can well people say let me rephrase that. People say that it can be bright. It can also make a guitar heavy. You can have a very heavy guitar if you've got a lot of maple. And that's why I had it hollowed out inside. Uh, so that's a custom made body. But it's a semi custom made body because I didn't apply any finish because I'm going to do that as part of the series. Uh, which I thought would be a a good way of uh, moving sideways to save people money actually because uh, you buy the parts unfinished they are quite a lot cheaper hundreds of dollars in some cases now of course some people will also tell you that well when you hollow out the body it takes away some of the top end yeah it does they say well, me they say you know them they the experts <laughs> there is such a thing yeah so so it's hollow it's maple on maple and the hollow will offset the two things that are could be problematic one is the brightness of the guitar and the second one is the weight so you take away off the wood you can be on the lighter guitar so it should end up as a guitar with this neck that's tinted the body will have some kind of ink on it or dye and a finish and uh, it should all be good that's the Warmoth neck literally as it came to me and I think you'll agree that uh, it's a very high quality neck it really is that's not a flaw on this neck anywhere it is exactly what they said it would be but I knew that before I ordered it so how would I score this out of a 10 well you've guessed it probably it's a 10 uh, the frets are fine, it's as straight as a die, it's got all the mod cons in it, it's exactly to what I, exactly what I ordered. Uh, yeah, it's nice. What do you want for your money? Well, how much was it, Tony? <laughs> it's price, I think, I think, it was in the sort of $400 mark or somewhere near there. Uh, and it would have been... At least another hundred and something dollars, give or take, had I had it finished. Hence the reason for not having it finished. And by the way, that knot there does add money. So if you just had a standard knot, I think it's pence difference. Or very cheap, very cheap if you have the standard stuff. But I, I, I always buy something that I need, not rather than something that's just on a shelf. So, so that... That's the neck. That's the sort of price range. Don't forget if you 
anywhere other than America, your shipping's going to be probably $85, which I think it was, give or take, something in that area. And when it gets to England, you have to pay tax, which is 20% of the price. So it makes this net quite expensive. But to be honest, I'd be very hard pressed. Uh, I know quite a number of companies, but I'd be very hard pressed in finding one that can supply me a neck of this quality to this specification exactly with my choices for that money especially in the UK it's not that easy of course loads of people will tell me different but I've yet to find the uh, the right supplier yeah so that's the warm of neck this is a very different one than the uh, than the uh, roasted maple one that I reviewed a while ago and it just shows you that you can uh, you can get some great necks out of Warmoth for a pretty low price. They make them as low as $160. How cheap do you want to go? How cheap as me? <laughs> Don't answer that. Till next time. Yeah. Stay safe. Away from madding crowds. And uh, I'll see you next time if you do that. Now get out of here.